the zone has established more than 1,400 enterprises registered, and also 26% are in the service sectors. And the zone is very popular among financial agencies and the services sector uh, projects. Uh, we can see that for the registered capital, capital, you know, the largest is 5 billion RMB and the lowest only 30,000 RMB. And the 1 RMB, um, the 6 RMB equals $1 according to the current exchange rate. So uh, more and more investors, they can get opportunities in the free trade zone. And potential future. Uh, some would really like to compare it to Hong Kong because uh, in China, that is the first uh, FTZ in mainline. Uh, they like to compare it with Hong Kong. And um, maybe in the future, that uh, they will have different uh, special areas. And also, other areas that came from China, they are applying want to become the next freight trade zone. But this is a pilot, so we can see more uh, in the future, maybe, but it is hard to say. And, okay, and that's all the great introduction of, of my discussion topic. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was really interesting. Professor um, Lee actually has shown um, the development of the economy for the last 25 years in China, uh, talking about whether domestic policies or, in, or open policies would be outside world and that how to affect the foreign trade and the foreign direct investments in the country and its effect on uh, the laborers. Um, I will open the floor now for discussion. I'm sure that there's a lot of questions. We have a lot of experts in this world who will have questions concerning how did China do it. Um, and maybe I, I would like to start, since I'm here, I would like to start with the first question, if you don't mind. You talked about domestic policies and changes and economic reform in China. And uh, you talked about having uh, uh, meetings with senior officials uh, recently, and they sort of put uh, the vision for um, and the action plan for 2020. Maybe I would like to hear a little bit more about more details about what is the policies that China um, adopted uh, to do better in its economy. And uh, um, now we're saying, uh, according to the numbers, we're talking about like 7.8%. Uh, relatively sustainable, but a bit going on the, on the lower pace. So, uh, we'd like to hear from you on what is it that China is doing concerning local domestic um, economic reform. And then I will open the whole discussion as well. Questions? Um, yeah, okay, my pleasure to answer your questions. And um, I think that more policies about the uh, new session of central government that. Uh, they focus on economic growth, and among the, the um, you know, the, it covers the many areas of China's economy. And we can attribute it to a focus on eight areas, including especially like finance and also international trade, and also the land uh, institution, and also other views. But for example, for the fairness, just I mentioned that they will uh, provide some uh, policies on um, finance institution reform, uh, for example, integration of interest rate, uh, not like in the past that the central government, uh, the central, central bank will give a rule that you cannot uh, over or less than 10% of central banks' benchmark. And also for the international trade, uh, we have realized that we if we want to keep the import and export uh, position in the world, we need to adopt new uh, policies. So Shanghai pilot of free trade zone is an example, and that's why we call it pilot, 
uh, because it is the first one in the mainland and we be operate uh, two or three years. We want to see what happened and then maybe open more. So the policy for China's international trade is to expand the openness of China. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions from the floor? Thank you very much. I uh, know that you divided the discussion into two parts. Yeah. One was about Chinese economy, yeah. and the other one was about the new experiment in the Shanghai yeah. uh, few years ago. Uh, the question is that uh, you know the high the higher uh, uh, responsible people in China we met in November to try to figure out they introduced also a new very important uh, measure which is the, to allow or to look again at the one child family. Uh, one child family. One child family. Yeah. Now they have changed that. <laughs> the reason is why. The second one. Uh, relates to you know, the, 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 what was called in China the famous book Currency Wars. Uh, currency Wars. Currency Wars? Currency, yes, the wars of currencies. War. Oh, the war. Uh, wars. War. Wars, war. Currency Wars. Currency Fight. Wars. Oh, fight. Challenge. Challenge. Challenge of the currency. Um, uh, the book was entitled The Currency War. It has been printed three times in China. And it is written by, I think, Professor John Bosch. You mean Chinese Kong. currency? It's a Chinese book by a Chinese author. It's called the Currency Wars. Currency Wars. Yeah. Currency. Because it, it talks about the fact that the United States is putting too much pressure on China to try to evaluate or devaluate the uh, Chinese currency. Uh, in order to the uh, yes, uh, uh, So the question is China has resisted that continuously. And now you are telling us that they have changed the policy of interest rate. Right? Now uh, interest rate policy is a substitution for maintaining a fixed <coughs> foreign exchange regime. Uh, do you think this is the best policy for China? Um, thank you very much. Okay, thank you for your questions. Uh, for the first one, that you talk about a one child policy, right? And now it has changed a lot uh, during the uh, last 10 months of conference. Um, because uh, in the past, you know, the China has a larger population, and in order to control the population, Increasing speed, uh, we have the policy of one child uh, family policy. Um, but now, just I mentioned, we can see that the labor forces in China, especially uh, in the uh, villages and also in the cities, um, the populations increasing speed tend to decline fast. So if we still use the one child policy and China is an aging society with more and more old people, so we will like the young people especially for labor forces. So that's why though we have used the, the one child policy before but now that we want to add the increasing of population speed and now the policy is we still control the population but different if a couple as one from one child family they can have two children so it's yeah